I found myself unable to reconcile the idea of a virtual world where kids would run around and play with objects and chat with each other without someone saying or doing something that might upset another. So I asked for a clarification. I'm confused. What standards should we use to decide if a message would be a problem for Disney? The response was one I'll never forget. Disney's standard is quite clear. No kid will be harassed, even if they don't know they are being harassed. Welcome to the Social Media Clarity Podcast. 15 minutes of concentrated analysis and advice about social media in platform and product design. We're going to try something new on the podcast, and we'd like your feedback. Each of the hosts has a series of stories they've collected over their careers associated with social media. We'd like to tell some of those stories in a series we call From the Vault. Today's story from the vault is from Habitat Chronicles, a blog I co-author with Chip Morningstar. And it's about moderation in early virtual worlds, specifically designed for children. March 2007. The untold story of Toontown's Speed Chat, or Block Chat TM from Disney, finally arrives by Randy Farmer. In 1992, I co-founded a company with Chip Morningstar and Douglas Crockford named Electric Communities. We initially did a lot of consulting for various media companies and were looking to leverage the emerging online gaming industry. One of those companies was Disney. Disney had formed a group to look into taking the brand online, including a full-fledged multiplayer experience as early as 1996. They were considering a product called Herc World, which was to leverage the upcoming movie franchise Hercules. Having built Lucasfilm's Habitat and Worlds Away, we were clearly amongst a handful of teams that had successfully constructed social virtual worlds that had made any real money. And Croc had media connections from his days at Paramount. So they brought us in to discuss what it would take to build a kid-safe virtual world experience. They had hired their own expert to lead the project, a former project manager for Knowledge Adventure, a kids' software company that had done some 3D work as well as their own online project, KA Worlds, which was meant to link sick children in hospitals together using computers and avatars. Disney makes no bones about how tightly they want to control and protect their brand, and rightly so. Disney means safe for kids. There would be no swearing, no sex, no innuendo, and nothing that would allow one child or adult pretending to be a child, to upset another. I found myself unable to reconcile the idea of a virtual world where kids would run around and play with objects and chat with each other without someone saying or doing something that might upset another. Even in 1996, we knew that text filters were no good at solving this kind of problem, so I asked for a clarification. I'm confused. What standards should we use to decide if a message would be a problem for Disney? The response was one I'll never forget. Disney standard is quite clear. No kid will be harassed, even if they don't know they are being harassed. So much for no harm, no foul, Chip grumbled quietly. This requirement led me to some deep thinking over the coming weeks and months about a moderation design I called the Disney Panopticon. But that's an episode for another day. Okay, that means chat for Herc World is out. And there's absolutely no way to meet your standard without incredibly high moderation costs, we replied. One of the guys piped up, Couldn't we do some kind of sentence constructor with a limited vocabulary of safe words? Before we could give it any serious thought, their own project manager interrupted. That won't work. We tried it for KA Worlds. We spent several weeks building a UI that used pop-downs to construct sentences and only had completely harmless words the standard parts of grammar, and safe nouns like cars, animals, and objects in the world. We thought it was the perfect solution, until we set our first 14-year-old boy down in front of it. Within minutes, he created the following sentence. I want to stick my long-necked giraffe up your fluffy white bunny. K.A. Worlds abandoned that approach. Electric Communities is right. Chat is out. That was pretty much settled but it felt like we'd collectively gutted the project. After all, if the kids can't chat, how could they coordinate? It'd end up being more like a world where you could see other players playing, but you couldn't really work together much. As I started daydreaming about how to get chat back into this project, we moved on to what activities these kids might do in the now chat-free Herc world. It was the standard fare. Collect stuff, ride stuff, 
shoot at stuff, and build stuff. Whoa, what was that last thing again? Kids can push around Roman columns and blocks to solve puzzles, make custom shapes and buildings, one of the designers said. I couldn't resist. Mmm, doesn't that violate the Disney standard? In this chat-free world, people will push stones around until they spell hi, or F-U-C-K, or their phone number, or whatever. You've just invented block chat, TM. If you can put down objects, you've got chat. We learned this in Habitat and Worlds Away, where people would turn 100 Afro heads into a waterbed. We all laughed, but it was that kind of awkward laugh that you know means you're probably all just wasting your time. Herc World never happened. Electric Communities moved on, renamed itself Communities.com, which has nothing in common with the current company, and did some wonderful design work on a giant 3D kids world for Cartoon Network, which ended up being much too ambitious to fund, but I mention it because the project was headed by Brian Bowman. Brian eventually left Atlanta for Disney, where he was in charge of the online experience for Zoog Disney, a preteen programming block. Brian remembered his work with us and asked us to help build a world for the Zoog audience. Nothing extravagant this time, just something simple like the palace, which had been acquired by Communities.com, a no-download, in-browser, 2D graphical chat with some programmed object capabilities. The Disney standard, now a legend amongst our employees, still held. No harassment, detectable or not, and no heavy moderation overhead. Brian had an idea, though. Fully constructed sentences, dozens of them, easy to access. Specialize them for the activities available in the world. Baz Douglas, our project manager working with Zoog, liked to call this feature Chatless Chat, so we built it and launched it for them. Disney was still very tentative about the genre, so they only ran it for about six months, and I doubt it was ever very popular. But the concept resurfaced at Disney a few years later, in 2002, in the form of Speed Chat in Toontown. It was refined. You select a subject, and then from a submenu of sentences, each automatically customized to the correct context. Selecting I need to find would magically insert the names of the items you have quests for. For all walk-up users, all interactions would be via speed chat. They added a method to allow direct chat between users that involves the exchange of secret codes that are generated for each user with parental permission. The idea is that kids would print them out and give them to each other on the playground. This is a great way for Disney to end run the standard since speed chat was an effective method of preventing the exchange of these codes and theoretically the codes had to be given in person, making the recipient not a stranger. Sure, some folks post them on message boards, but presumably those are folks who are one, adults, or two, know each other, right? <laughs> in any case, as long as no one could pass secret codes within Toontown itself, Disney felt safe. Ah, but the ghost of Block Chat TM passed. Soon after Toontown opened its doors, they added Toon Estates, a feature that gives you a house with furniture, initially a bed, gumball machine, chair, and an armoire. Then they added the ability to buy more furniture of all shapes and sizes from catalogs. And then you could invite people to visit your house and see how you had arranged all your cool stuff. And sure enough, chatters figured out a few simple protocols to pass their secret codes. Several variants are of this general form. User A. Please be my friend. Come to my house. And user B responds, Okay. Those are all speed chat phrases. User A moves picture frames on his wall or his furniture to make the number four. User B writes down four on a piece of paper and responds, Okay. User A then, once again, moves the objects around to make the letter or number that's next in the code, Okay. B writes, Okay. And so on until the entire code is transmitted. Then user B enters the secret code into the Toontown software, and the next chat message you see? There, that worked. Hi, I'm Jim, 15 slash M slash CA. What's your A slash S slash L? It seems that many of the lessons of Lucasfilm's habitat still ring true. I'll consider this as the speed chat corollary. By hook or by crook, customers will always find a way to connect with each other. Thanks to the legendary Robin Hood of Neopets for telling me about this secret exchange protocol. And yes, Blockchat TM brand is a joke. In a related news item, on October 31st, 2013, Nintendo shut down their SpotPass feature of SwapNote, 
To read from their press release, Nintendo has learned that some consumers, including minors, have been exchanging their friend codes on internet bulletin boards and then using SwapNote to exchange offensive material. Nintendo has been investigating ways of preventing this and determined it is best to stop the spot past feature of SwapNote because it allows direct exchange of photos and was actively misused. The more things change, the more they stay the same. Thanks for listening. Go to socialmediaclarity.net. This podcast is available under Creative Commons license.